Hey guys, uh, this is not going to be a shave video, uh, like I promised on Saturday, uh, I'm going to do a quick den tour, uh, just to kind of show uh, what I have here in the den, because I've been getting a lot of questions regarding what soaps I have, what brushes, and so on and so forth, just to kind of give a little overview. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> This is, I think, the third attempt now. Uh, <laughs> logistics of mounting the camera on a suction cup mount uh, camera, uh, it's my cell phone, uh, has been quite a challenge. So uh, <laughs> please uh, excuse any uh, not so ideal angles. Uh, it's, it's been quite a feat and it's been very frustrating. <laughs> so, uh, I hope you enjoy it nonetheless, um, and yeah, I'll just uh, go ahead and switch around the camera, and then uh, we'll get going, so hold on a sec. Okay, uh, as far as the view goes, this is my little shave cabinet that I uh, always reach into for the witch hazel. So here's me, hey. Uh, <laughs> And I guess I will just open it up here real quick. This is what the mess looks like. Of course, there's uh, several other things in here, the general purpose stuff, which we will be removing real quick. Uh, yep. All right. Now, uh, I figure I'd start with the razors. Um, just to kind of give you a little bit of an overview, here's the, uh, the bottle of witch hazel that you guys uh, know from the shaves. Right, so, this is basically it. Uh, there's one razor missing, uh, it's on loan right now uh, with a friend of mine. It's uh, another uh, slim adjustable, Gillette slim adjustable that I have, uh, since I have this one here which is my dad's uh, and yeah very honored to have it so it's it's getting used in the rotations all right now uh, let's get into it most of my razors are vintage um, like the black beauty let's see if that focuses Uh, doesn't seem to want to focus. Auto focus. A little. No, doesn't want to focus. Yep. Gillette Black Beauty. This is an S2. I'm gonna try and try and be quick about it because on on one of my first attempts I took a little long, and uh, yeah, the video got interrupted. So. This is my Slim Twist, made in England. It's a 1J, J1. Uh, very nice piece, off of eBay. Uh, just to kind of, so you can, you guys can maybe, maybe see it a little bit better. Yeah, here we go. Well, it does work if it wants to. Pretty good shape. One of, one of my, uh, my favorite Razors, because very enjoyable, somewhat mild. Um, I do prefer a mild razor, like uh, this uh, late 40s beater, uh, super speed. <laughs> it's missing the end caps. Uh, as you can see, the mechanism has already slipped out a little bit, but it still gives a fantastic shave, really have to say. Absolutely digging it, and this is without date code. I was just kind of looking, I don't know why, but as you can see, it's in pretty rough shape, but nonetheless, great razor. Got it, got it for, uh, for uh, pretty cheap, actually, uh, in the state that it was in, so I'm, I'm very happy about that. Right, then one of the modern razors that I have, courtesy of Brad Melling. A lot of these razors came from Brad. <laughs> My 39 
C, Merkur, slant, very heavy. This thing's got some heft to it. The Merkur Progress. See if we can get that in the center here a little bit. There we go. Then the autofocus also works. So beautiful razor. Very nice. Then I have this is the US one. The new Gillette New Long Home made in US. Brass top. Uh, brass, a copper top, uh, rest is br uh, solid brass. Uh, keep it from focusing there. Yeah, come on. All right, well, done one, two. All right, then another modern one. This is the head of a Razor Rock uh, German 37 slant, and it is paired with the handle of a Scotch and Stowe uh, fatty uh, makes for makes for a great razor, real nice heft and short handle. Then we have another new long comb. This one is also courtesy of Brad because it is the made in Canada. One beautiful razor. Actually, this this one shaves slightly different to the, the US one and I actually prefer the Canadian one. This is my uh, travel razor a uh, black handle Gillette Super Speed um, it's, got, it's got a little bit of plate loss on it that's why the travel razor uh, was part of a, a package let's see, come on focus please no, it doesn't want to. Okay. Works great, but it's not the prettiest of, of razors. And since I have a second one in there, um, I prefer this one for traveling. This one is an M2. Just saying. Speaking of the other one, this is in, in much greater shape. Uh, another eBay find. Uh, basically the same razor, but in, in a more a little bit prettier condition. Uh, great razor. All the, the super speeds are. I uh, don't seem to have much problem with any of them. And this is an 04. Then I have a regular flare tip and this is the user grade one. The one in really nice condition with case and everything is outside on display. But this is the one for use. It's got a little bit of brassing on it, just an ever so slight plate loss, but uh, still, still in good shape. Uh, shaves very well, and this is an F2. So, yep. Courtesy of Brad, my red tip. Absolutely fantastic razor. Check this out. Beautiful condition and just shaves absolutely fantastic. Absolutely love it. I mean, the ins inside and out, absolutely beautiful. And this, this is probably my, uh, my absolute favorite uh, of the, the flare tips uh, because of the heft. And it's an A2. Right, let's put that there. I'm starting to run out of space here on the sink. <laughs> All right, then. My uh, golden Gillette Tech with the fat handle. Really nice shape. Um, yeah, this is. Whew, I'd have to look. I'm terribly sorry. Uh, if I can, if I can uh, add the the dates in here, I will. Just underneath, as far as the editing goes, as you can see, it's got a little bit of, of uh, scarring up on top. Oh, come on, focus. There we go. Yeah, it's got some scarring on top, but still shaves great. It's got the regular slots. So that's a post-war 
I think it's a 1956, something like that, 53, 56. This is my pre-war Bakelite tech with the, if you can see that, triangular slots. Very nice razor, a little more aggressive than your usual tech, just a touch. Not major. So yeah, very nice. Excellent condition. And I like all my vintage razors. I mean, there's there's not one of them which I absolutely dislike because I would have already gotten rid of them. This is the normal tech, as, as I would, would say, with, with a ball end handle. A uh, very heavy handle. And if you can, uh, yep, it'll show up. The Gillette diamond up top. Post more uh, due to the slots. No date code. So before, uh, I think, what is it, 53, 54? Uh, I think when they when they start putting in the, the date codes. So, oh, let's see there. Right, contract tech. Uh, very light. Um, it's got some, some color loss, but that doesn't uh, deter it from giving a great shave. You can see the, the coating's worn off just a tad. But uh, still, fantastic razor. And it's got the, uh, the regular slots in it, if you can see that. It's, uh, it does have an S in there, which I don't know quite to place. So if anybody of you knows, please put that in the, in the comments on the contract tech, an S. Now, this is my very first razor, which I started out with. The uh, Vanderhagen um, Waishi, basically, it's a Waishi razor. Um, this is what started it all. Seen a lot of use in the beginning, and it still held up great. Uh, Still, still a razor which I like to use. Um, it's not as mild as some people might think, but uh, I've done a video on that, so uh, just look that up. Uh, it's actually got more bite than, than most people think. Now here's a great beginner razor for anybody that's uh, wanting to uh, get into this whole thing. This razor, I think, with shipping costs nine bucks or something like that on Amazon. It's the uh, Lord Tech. And uh, got an aluminum handle. It's the uh, exact copy of a Travel Tech head uh, or a late 60s tech. Uh, really mild, but uh, still, with com combined with the right blade, works ab absolutely uh, a, a treat. So, yeah, let's keep going. Uh, I have to excuse my stomach. <laughs> now this is my Razor Rock Old Type. Focus. Come on. There we go. Razor Rock Old Type. Uh, I think this was a maybe a 16 buck purchase at the time. Uh, solid uh, handle, but uh, basically it's a uh, uh, yeah pop metal head uh, Zamak. Um, but nonetheless, gives a great shave. Uh, used this for my first uh, open comb October uh, extensively for 21 days. Uh, took me a little while to, you know, just kind of get used to it because it is a little more aggressive than the razors I was used to at the time. But uh, still, nonetheless, uh, right now I would consider it kind of a medium, medium aggressive shave. And I don't know how close it does get to the original. Um, to the original old types but this one also is really nice all right so the last of the de no hold on we got we got one more my wilkinson sword classic right here great razor very cheap uh well inexpensive to uh to acquire in Europe, a two-piece razor, uh, plastic construction, very simple, but still, nonetheless, gives a great shave, really nice to have. 
Okay, and this is the last DE in here, I believe. My little uh, Bakelite from the 60s, the unknown one. There's no markings on it, and basically it's, you can't, can't really figure out what it is. Yeah, just so you guys can see the handle a little bit and the head design. There we go. That's what it looks like. It's an aggressive little beastie. If you don't watch out. Uh, the blade alignment on this one isn't always perfect. So, you have to watch out on that one. Right, so now we're getting more into the single edges. My featherweight, gem featherweight. Very nice. Great shaver, uh, rather mild for a single edge. The same featherweight, well, it's also a featherweight, but this one is a little different. It has an olive handle and a matte head. It's got a little bit uh, slightly different head design. Hold on, let me see if I can put that into focus. Right, come on. If you can see that, a little bit different head design. Found that at the uh, at a local uh, antique shop for like five bucks. I was very happy about that. My, my uh, clock proof, wonderful mechanism. There we go. Let's see if we can get that going. Beautiful shape. There's the handle. There we go. All right. My Micromatic Open Comb, slightly uh, tarnished a little bit, but nonetheless, love it, very aggressive. Let's see if that shows up, it's without the bumps, all brass design, hold on, here we go, come on, focus, all right, here we go. Yeah. Focus isn't, the, the auto focus doesn't really want to play. Alright, then we have, this is the Ever Ready, I think this is the 1914, I believe is what, what it's called. I'm sometimes confused a little, but uh, if you can see the patent date there, showing up in this corner, 2414. So that makes it a 1914 in uh, pretty decent condition, I'd say. Good enough for me anyway. Also one of the more aggressive ones. Alright, so my uh, my E-type, no, e no uh, G-type, G-type injector. Yeah, you can see the blade. Oh, come on. <laughs> this really doesn't make it easy, does it? Alright. Eh, no, it doesn't want to... doesn't want to focus. Alright, this is the injector razor, the I-Type. As you can see, different handle. And I got this one with the case. Great shape. There we go. Come on, focus. Come on. There we go. As you can see, less blade gap, less blade exposure. Uh, a lot milder. And this is one of my favorite uh, injector razors. Then we have the Gem Junior. I had to look. Me, Jim Jr. There we go. Jim Jr. It's got a little bit of wear on it, but nonetheless works just wonderful. Let's 
Just going to focus on the inside. And then get some light in there. Yeah, like the little gem. Decent shape. Spring is still in, in, in good condition. Snaps tight. Uh, the ornate handle is, is the kicker on this one. Really like that. Alright, and uh, the last of my regular single edges, my Gem G bar, the one that started a single edge thing for me. Great condition, love it. One of the more milder razors. Dig that handle. And this was another eBay find. Alright, and well, this is basically the last injector razor. This is the one uh, Ken Surfs used on his uh, Roger Moore tribute shave. Uh, the I think it's the L type, isn't it? Chic. Let's see if that will come in. Yep. Rather uh, more on the mild side, but not quite uh, as mild as the the I one. The I one I consider a little milder, but nonetheless in great shape. And of course, courtesy of Brad, he sent me this one. Very nice razor. All right, so that's what's in the cabinet. There's uh, the head of that uh, Scotch and Stow, uh, alongside a spare handle uh, off of uh, the razor rock, but I don't consider that <laughs> a, f a fully assembled razor because it's just basically spares. Here I keep some of the, the blades which I've started to use, which have the markings on them. Uh, right, oh, hold on, there's uh, two more down here. Underneath, let's see if we can get that in focus. This is what it looks like there. All right, right here. Out of my display, the uh, Razor Rock Stealth slant, um, the stainless steel. Very heavy. Gotta watch out. Still has the blade in it <laughs> from from uh, Saturday's live shave, and of course my Edwin Jagger, the Kelvin. This is the short-handled one. Focus, please. Hello? No? Okay. Well. Yeah, there we go. Very nice, good and early. Uh, absolutely enjoy it. And you can see, well, maybe poking out of there, the, uh, which one is this? The Trap 2 that I got from Corey, uh, Pittsburgh wet shaver, the handle with the cartridge in it. This is an X2, so it's a 1977. And I'll just keep it here in this, uh, in this cup that my uh, son gave me for Christmas many, many years ago. So it's all, just, just for display, doesn't do anything. As you can see, Tabak soap. In here, my old spice mug. Um, and uh, in it is the last remnants of that half puck of Hasselia uh, coconut. And this is a lather ball. And you can create the lather in here. You can keep some water in there, so on and so forth, and really grab it, grab onto it. Very nice. A little impractical, I found out, with, with some of the larger brushes, but still, nonetheless, a nice display piece. Okay, well, that's the razors, and uh, I'll do a quick cut here, and then we'll move on to the next subject. Okay, and we're back. Hey, everybody. <laughs> now, uh, I'd say I'll start with the aftershaves and just pile them up down here, uh, because everything's still full of, full of razors on the sink. So, well, let's dig in. Now, this is a bottle of the Eddie Bauer Adventure, I believe. Vintage 90s, somewhere along that line. It's not produced in this form anymore. Uh, very nice scent, manly. Uh, yeah, it's got the, the, the cedar-ish top notes, kind of kind of woodsy type scent. Uh, very nice, but very strong also. 
Um, right. This is the 4711. This is the Cologne uh, bottle I brought from uh, Germany. Uh, 4711 citrus, uh, no, kind of bergamot, neroli ish, a little bit more towards the neroli than the bergamot. Uh, it's a citrusy scent. Let's just uh, state that. I have the matching aftershave, as you can see. There we go, matching aftershave. They both smell very similar, so uh, that really goes well. Uh, as you can see, the uh, the beard balm, a uh, beard balm, the, the beard wax. Let's set up. Here we go. Come on. Focus, 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 focus. There we go. This is the stuff I'll use. Set up the stash. Put that aside. All right. Uh, <clears throat> regular Old Spice U.S. version plastic bottle. Then I have the Old Spice uh, white water from Germany uh, glass bottle, and this differs. Uh, it's kind of a kind of a fresh aqua scent. Um, very nice, very refreshing. Uh, totally different from the original Old Spice. Uh, let's just dig into here. Uh, U.S. Brute aftershave, uh, classic. Then uh, Pinard Clubman Vanilla. Very nice. The regular Pinard Clubman. Then I've got uh, some Tabak Original, just the small bottle of the aftershave lotion. Uh, it still contains alcohol, um, so don't be deceived by the word lotion. Right, uh, let's get into let's get these smaller bottles out of the way. This is a little sampler of the regular Stetson. Uh, let's see if it'll show up. I always gotta kind of hold it to the side because I can see it. In the mirror I got mounted here, which I had to drag out of the other bedroom. Come on, focus. Go, go. No, not today. Okay, just regular Stetson. Put that down here. Then there are some uh, Stetson Fresh. This is one of these Christmas uh, things for like $9.99 or something like that. That I picked this up at Walgreens. Stetson Fresh, see if that'll show up. Oh, you're going to have to believe me on this one. Uh, then I have a bottle, what is labeled uh, as Tabak. But it's not not the uh, the original Tabak. This is some sort of uh, Turkish knockoff. It's, it's more of a tobacco uh, leaf scent. Um, nonetheless, very nice. Uh, it's just basically straight uh, tobacco leaf. Um, without being too pungent. It's a, it's a rather fleeting scent, but not bad. Then I've got a sample of Captain's Choice Cat on Nine Tails. Yep, that'll show up. Nice. Just a small sample. I'm not a huge Bay Rum fan, especially because, you know, if it gets clovey, I'm, I'm, I don't tend to, to like it too much. But uh, that serves, serves me well if I ever do need a Bay Rum fix. Little sample of Sterling Autumn Glory. Let's see if that will pop, pop up. Hello. Come on. Autumn Glory is a very nice uh, woodsy scent. Uh, basically, it reminds you of walking through the woods. Uh, you get that fur, you get uh, a little bit of the, uh, the, the wood scent. Very nice. And a sample of, this is Endymion by uh, Penhaligans. Uh, just a small sprayer I got. Fantastic stuff. So, yeah. All right. That's actually my favorite scent from uh, the Penhaligans line. And the only one I could get past the wife. <laughs> so, yeah. All right. Let's get back into Sterling. Got some... Uh, Some black cherry with menthol. Come on, focus, please. Please, focus. 
There we go. All right. Put that down here. Got the sharp dressed man, Sterling, aftershave. But man, I'm telling you. Killing me. Coming to focus. Very annoying. There we go. Now we're getting somewhere. Got the Piacenza. And the Sterling Noir. All very nice scents. Um, Sterling Noir is uh, Dracar Noir. Uh, Piacenza would be, I think, Aqua de Parma. Sharp Crest Man we uh, Green Irish Tweed. Okay. The Razor Rock line. The American Barber. Uh, this is uh, oh, Rief Gosh from. Uh, can't remember the maker of the original, but awesome scent. This is a uh, fine American blend. The Razor Rock Aqua. Nice aquatic uh, scent. Uh, very light, well, not very light, but uh, pretty light. The Italian Barber Amici, I think this was the first edition that they came out with. Now it's clear, this one was still uh, kind of tinted, and you have to shake it because it separates otherwise, and it turns into this milky color, but it's supposed to be that way. I, uh, yeah, I, I double checked and Apparently it was this first version that they had, which came out this way. Got the uh, Razor Rock Puros, fantastic tobacco scent, my absolute go-to as far as uh, tobacco stuff goes. And the Italian Barber Millionario, which is Paco Rabanne, one million, uh, and is now, I think, relabeled as Razor Rock Gold. Or something like that. Fantastic scent. One of the wife's favorites. That's why I uh, tend to wear it. Uh, well, it's it's more of a more of a, a a winter scent. Right. Next one. Cause yeah, uh, yeah. We'll leave it at that. The Irish Moos. Uh, another one from Germany. Uh, fantastic scent. If you hard to describe, if you don't know it, see if you can get your hands on it. It's it's fantastic stuff. The Pitralon Classic, also great stuff. The Hattrick Classic, fantastic fresh scent, nice citrus opener, and uh, great for for a good number of hours. Got some staying power. Here the. Proraso Red, Sandalwood, my go-to Sandalwood. Absolutely love that Sandalwood scent. All right, let's get into the bombs. Tabak Original, uh, aftershave bomb, non-alcohol, great stuff. Uh, oh, hold on, let's put these two stick, well, let's get them out of the way. My two styptic uh, pencils. Uh, this one is unlabeled, but it's the German one. This is the Pinard uh, Clubman one. Uh, seen some some use. <laughs> uh, great tool to have in a den. Recommended to everybody to at least have one. The Florina aftershave balm. Uh, it's got a. It's basically the same consistency as you can tell. It's got a similar bottle to the uh, Nivea. But a uh, little bit different scent, but the, the same uh, base uh, balm basically. This is a, a German brand, house brand uh, balm, Elkos aftershave balm. Uh, very nice, um, got, a, got a little bit of a citrus scent, kind of a Arco-ish citrus scent. So it's, uh, yeah, a little synthetic, but uh, nonetheless, not bad. 
the Prorazzo Blue aftershave balm. Great stuff. And the Nivea Sensitive, which is somewhat of a classic. Yeah, I think everybody's got a Nivea balm somewhere. Alright, so this is the this is a, a German kind of like a CBS uh, balm, the Balea Men Energy Q10 aftershave balm. Really good stuff. Nice uh, nice mild scent, but nonetheless it's scented. That's why I got this one from Balea, which is absolutely unscented. Ultra sensitive, and they took out all the perfume uh, stuff in it. So it is absolutely unscented and great because so, it won't uh, mess with any of your aftershaves and this is just the refiller for the other one. Alright, now this stuff here is not interesting, not really, just another mouthwash and some, ah hold on, that's something shave related, some Institut Carité aftershave uh, balm, which I still have to try out, um, I got this as uh, one of the things from, from Razor Rock on, on one of the orders. And uh, need to need to try it out, see if it's any good. Uh, yeah, this is just a German mouthwash, and there's some uh, Dr. Carver shave butter from way back in the day, which definitely needs to take a walk. All right, so um, yeah, I'm gonna cut real quick and restart the next video. I don't want to get too long on these. Okay, and we are back. Alright, uh, let's, uh, let's do the brushes real quick so I can get them out of the way and won't, uh, don't have to uh, grab over them. These are, or this is, my Grey Dog Vintage German Handle. Uh, gotta set the focus again, here we go. Doesn't really show up at quite as nice as I would like it to. The horsehair. Beautiful, and it was a gift of a gentleman called Grey Dog, and yeah, absolutely dig it. Fantastic, very soft knot. Um, some people might classify it as flopsy, but I love it. My very first brush, my Simogue 1438. Uh, fantastic uh, boar hair. Uh, it's well worn in, beautiful. Right now it comes across a little stiff. But uh, soak it in some water, and this puppy really comes alive. Recommend it. Uh, it's it's a it's a great starter brush. Now, the uh, Sterling 26 millimeter Badger finest uh, fantastic gel tips. Forty dollars, hard to believe for a 26 mil brush. Absolutely killer. I really gotta say, uh, absolutely digging it. The only reason it doesn't come into play more often is due to the mustache and everything. It's a rather large knot. <laughs> uh, my Mer shaving. Here we go. Yeah, it comes out nicely. The strawberry and cream. Mer shaving. 22 millimeter. Oops. Uh, 22 millimeter finest. It's a TGN knot. Gel tips. It's a fan knot. Uh, Wonderful brush, my first custom, and it is, uh, yeah, one of my favorites. Absolutely dig it. Uh, well, needs to be kind of sorta in every den. Uh, the size is, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I think the deciding factor on that one. It's a Omega Pro Forty Eight uh, bore brush. Uh, very lofty, uh, good backbone, great to uh, to bowl lather. That's the reason why I, I initially got it, because the Simogue was was rat that was actually my second brush because the Simogue was uh, a little on the short side sometimes for mugs and stuff. Now here here is the brush, my Shave Mac Do One Silver Tip. Uh, come on, show up. There we go. Shave Mac. I think you can. Uh, I think that'll show up. Fantastic brush. It's a uh, 23 mil, I believe. 
and uh, <laughs> yeah there's not very many brushes that compare to this as far as badgers go I need to find a spot to put this the sterling uh, 20 is this a 26 mil? Uh, yes, I think it's the 26 mil. Uh, this is the, the, the smaller brother of the Sterling Kong because it has a little shorter loft. Uh, yeah, great synthetic brush. Uh, the Plissant type knot. And uh, all around very, very good to have and inexpensive. I think it's below $15. Ah, <laughs> the Razorock 400, another wonderful gift item from Brad Melling. I'm very, very thankful that he uh, gifted this and all the other items to me. Very fortunate on that end. Uh, <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out a way to uh, thank him on that. Okay, and the last two brushes, which are up here. This is a black fiber synthetic from uh, the German pharmacy. Uh, Izana, uh, great little little flopsy uh, synthetic brush, inexpensive uh, plastic handle, but uh, works well. Uh, can't say anything bad about it. And also another German pharmacy brush. This is like four bucks. This is a bore, and took forever to wear in, but finally we are there. Um, Plastic handle, bore brush, four bucks, can't complain. <laughs> Very nice. Okay, uh, I'll, how far along are we? Five minutes, okay. I'll just keep going on this as far as the stuff that goes up here. This is just uh, uh, like a hand cream because uh, I do work in an industrial environment, as you can probably tell by my nails, because they <laughs> sometimes they do not come easy. Very, uh, they, they don't clean out very easy due to the, the, the grease and all that kind of stuff. It's a uh, pain in the butt. And uh, having to use industrial uh, hand scrubbing uh, uh, lotion, uh, lotion soaps, uh, you need a good hand cream, and that basically uh, does it. Uh, vintage bottle Old Spice, Schulten. This is my my own, the, the one I bought myself at age 16. I'll just put these down here. Some Stetson cooling moisture aftershave lotion, non-alcoholic but nice menthol. Uh, good stuff, smells great. Aqua Balba Musk, gotta have it. Aqua Balba Ice Sport as a decant, and I just put the peel the labels off the bottles and cut them to size and put them on here. If you're gonna ask me where I got the bottles from, I'm gonna say my mom's basement because that's what where I got them from. So, right, um, Men and Skin Bracer. There you go, just the good green stuff, same type bottle. The, hold on, uh, let's get the last one out of the way. The Aqua Velva Ice Blue. As you can see, haven't used it for a while, there's a little bit of dust on top, I do apologize. Uh, I'm going to use the chance to, you know, when I have all this rearranged, to be able to clean all this thing. So, uh, yeah, you basically forced me to clear it all out. So thank you for that. Like I said, good stuff. You can have it for cheap. Uh, but nonetheless, its scent is good. Uh, fantastic uh, menthol and all that kind of stuff. There we go. The Fairhope Soap Company Iced Aftershave Balm Seattle, which I won in a giveaway. When they say iced, they mean it. Uh, plenty of... Uh, Plenty of, of menthol in this, and this is their barbershop scent, and uh, very nice. Stays around for a good while, too. I'm really gonna say. My Turkish lemon cologne, 
courtesy of the last uh, vacation in Germany because my hometown has a large Turkish population and so you can pick this up for, uh, I think I paid three bucks for it alright, the next well, not much explaining there Phoenix Artisan Accoutrements CAD wonderful, love it more of the Razor Walk the Don Marco up top here, this is some of the overflow that wouldn't fit in the cabinet. Don Marco, fantastic bergamot Veroli scent, uh, wonderful. Uh, you get that nice orangey scent. Fine lavender pour homme. Let's see if that'll show up. There we go. Great lavender. But a little on the dark side. Uh, it's, it's got that, that uh, dark uh, scent to it. And if you hear some, some weird whining noises, that's my dog outside because I took him outside. Because earlier on, my phone uh, did a Ken Surfs and uh, I've got a tile floor in here so I don't, don't need any, any, I need to get to hurry up here. Um, Tuscan Ode, Tuscan Oud, sorry, uh, from Razor Rock. Man, this is hard to describe scent. It's, uh, it, you got that oud, you got that, that Tuscany, um, kind of, you get the, the little bit of the, 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 uh, it's hard to describe, I really can't, it's, it's, yeah, great manly scent, um, a little bit woodsy, uh, it's just, yeah, fantastic. <laughs> and the fine L'Orange Noir. Great scent, uh, what is it, uh, Terre de Hermès, I believe, is the scent behind that one. And, last but not least, German original Old Spice scent uh, in the glass bottle. And it is different to the US version, oddly enough. So, right now I have three different original Old Spice. The German version, the US version, and the vintage version, and they all smell different. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> it just got a, got a little bit as far as, you know, what, what they feature right up top, uh, as far as uh, weighing in on the, on the different notes. It's, it, they all have the same scent in them, but they're weighted a little different. So, yeah, okay, this was in here, and uh, the next one will be outside in the soap storage. <laughs> I have to take you outside, okay? So hold on a sec, and we'll, we'll, uh, ah, hold on. I'll do a second video on this one, because otherwise the, the whole length of this video might just get too long. All right, well, first of all, thank you for sticking with me so far. I hope I didn't bore you too much, and uh, yeah, I'll get this all cleaned up, and then we'll do the soap storage. Okay, so this is the dresser. Hey there. And uh, this is where I display some of the uh, the mugs which I want to put on the uh, the shelving system that I'm uh, looking at right now. And if you want to see them a little closer, yeah, they all have a little content in them. Uh, some some blades uh, here, are my uh, straight razors, and I'll. Just uh, set up here real quick, and then uh, I'll explain them individually, okay? And in case you're wondering, <laughs> my wife made these, and that was uh, when we got the new sewing machine, and she was just kind of goofing around a little bit. She wanted to toss them, but uh, yeah, I just couldn't. Uh, so they, they just stay here. So I like them. So yeah, let me just uh, set up shop and I'll be right back. So, uh, yeah, I've had to use the front-facing camera because I couldn't see squat what I was doing. I apologize, uh, the quality on this isn't uh, that good, but uh, let me uh, just get everything out of the way and then uh, we'll get into it. Alright, so this is something I acquired recently. It's an Opal brush which needs to be re-knotted. 
uh, and restored. <clears throat> I'm just going to go through it real quick. Avon mug, Old Spice mug, the, the coffee mug. This is actually a coffee mug. And the, uh, the black shave mug. This one's from like 85 or something like that. So it was only made in, in limited numbers and I was very fortunate to get it um, in an antique shop in Florida. This is the rimless uh, Old Spice mug. Hold on. This is another regular Old Spice mug with the rim. A little later vintage and this one is the Grand Turk in good condition it's got some some uh, random blades in it <clears throat> now this one <laughs> again Brad Brad Melling this is one of the earlier I think this is even the the first version of the old spice mug uh, which is I think hull pottery this, this one's still handmade and in excellent condition. And he sent this to me. Thank you, Brad. Now, to get into my straights, to get those out of the way. This is, uh, what was this? Uh, whoo, an urn, I think. As you can see, very small blade. This was part of a... a <clears throat> a travel kit that I got from the uh, 60s so I don't know how, how old this is I don't know much about it uh, it's apparently gotten some use out of it due to the thin blade already I don't know if I'm gonna be able to restore this one or you know have it honed well we'll see about that this is one I got in an antique shop uh, it is, as far as I know, it says Frederick uh, Reynolds, manufactured in Sheffield. Uh, definitely needs to be honed, but still sharp enough to slice your finger. Trust me, tried it. <laughs> so yeah, this was, uh, I think I got this one for like 10 bucks or something. Uh, still in fantastic shape. Then I've got my Chevette, courtesy of Brad. Parker Chevette. Uh, see if this will show up. Parker. I've actually done, uh, I think, two shaves now with it. <clears throat> Getting better. Getting better. And the custom gold dollar. 300 from Brad with the custom tip and the custom scales. Okay, that's that. Now, <laughs> uh, in case you were wondering when I, when I did this video, this is my blade bank. And yes, it is all it is is a can of baked beans and uh, punched. Uh, a slit in it, and there they are. Since I don't have any small kids, uh, this doesn't need to be secured. Right, so we got that covered. Now to the scents that I have sitting on top here. These are the ones I use more often. The uh, Tabak Man. This is the aftershave. Uh, great scent. Uh, I'll, I'll see if I can post some some uh, scent notes on this uh, somewhere here on the bottom. This is the matching eau de toilette. There we are. I'm terribly sorry about the bad lighting, but this is about the best I can get it. Uh, this is some Hugo Boss. Uh, I think it's Emotion or whatever it's called. Had this for ages. Some uh, vintage Swiss Army. This is the first version of their scent that they had, and I've had this since about 2000, so 17 years. They don't make that scent anymore. They have uh, six different ones now. 
two samples of uh, aftershaves. One is for, uh, what is it? Aquatic and, uh, what is this? Liam Cruz from Stash Soapworks. I got that from Andrew. Uh, so thank you very much. The uh, English leather. The, uh, this is Mex Ice Touch. Had this for a very long time also, uh, probably since 98, 99. Nice scent, fresh. Uh, hard to describe. Nothing in it, but just a vintage uh, Colgate shaving stick tin as a little display. Right, and now we're getting into the fancier stuff. So, into the shaving stuff here. Done a little piece on this one, the Atra uh, set for the Mouse Brothers with a shave stick and a travel brush. Put that over here. Here is my uh, Gillette New Deluxe. Let's see if that'll show up properly. New Deluxe. As you can see, it's got the flat bottom there, and it's also the, uh, the it's, well, yeah, it's the short comb. There. So, fantastic condition, in case. Uh, just a little vintage blade bank. Uh, no, I don't want to polish it up. I kind of like the, uh, the tarnish on it, just makes it look uh, that much nicer. You can see the age. Some uh, old vintage uh, blades, uh, Gymnastic Luxus. Uh, I think they're made in Germany. Yeah, 20, uh, 20, uh, 20 Klingen, 20 blades. Uh, this must be from the very early days because I have one here. I'll pull that out because as you can see, it's the three hole design with the rounded edges. And no, I will not use that one. They're a little too old and the wrappers have more or less deteriorated. Okay, need some battery here in, in a minute. Uh, let, me, let me just whisk through this uh, travel set. Gillette travel set, wonderful condition. Still with the uh, with the pouch and the original box. Thank you, Brad. My Makua 45 Bakelite and some Balzano blades, which I just packed in there in the travel case. Uh, I didn't feature this on the original uh, video. Some vintage PAL injector blades in the dispenser. The blue blades, you've uh, pretty well all seen. I've had them in some videos. Here's some, some vintage hospital uh, blades. Haven't used them either, either and uh, probably will not because the wrappers are all open. The only downside to this one is that the lid is, is unfortunately broken off, but this is the display uh, vintage flare tip. And... Uh, no, these aren't the original blades that are in there. They're Gillette Nassettes that I refilled in that uh, blade holder. Same thing is here. I actually packed these with the uh, modern uh, Gillette Platinums that are in there. I just opened them up and took the old blades out, refilled them. Some Gillette Thin Blades. <laughs> Great for display, not so much for shaving. Um, Hold on, let me get these old blades off here because they're going on, on display. Got a vintage Burma shave set from a couple of years ago. They had this out there. So, yeah, it's not vintage, but, uh, I mean, you can still get it. As you can see, it's got the brush, the, uh, the mug, the soap. Uh, yeah, just a nice display, but it's filled. It's, it's not just... Uh, Display only. The uh, the pocket. 
the no-name pocket, I call it, <laughs> with some uh, vintage uh, rugby blue slotted blades, which I haven't tried either. Don't think I will. Got various uh, vintage blades around here, and um, this is my vintage German razor, which I don't know who made it. But it's got that nice case, that nice blade holder, and it's got some vintage Rotbart blades in it. Now, as far as blades go, uh, I'll do that on a separate video at some other point in time because I have a multitude of blades and I'm not going to go into it. Um, as you saw, that big silver tin at the end there, uh, that contains all my blades and it is filled to the brim. So, please excuse that. Now, I'm going to charge the phone real quick and then we'll get into the soaps. So, thank you guys. Okay, hope it works. Hope it stays. All right, this is the overflow and the soap cabinet. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's a lot going on here. I'm not going to go into details on the scents, guys. Uh, this will just blow the video totally out of proportion. So... I'll just start up front. Uh, this is a little bit of essential oil that I got, uh, which I'm basically not allowed to tell who from. Right, Williams Mug Soap. This is the regular stuff I can buy in the store. Uh, been uh, giving me a hard time. The uh, Fine American Blend that I got from Brad. The Colgate, also from Brad. The Vintage Williams from Brad, uh, right, Canadian one. Pro Rosso Red, fantastic uh, sandalwood. Pro Rosso White, uh, what is it? Uh, oatmeal and tea tree, and uh, I think it's got a little bit of hint of uh, like apple in it. Uh, but it's got some menthol, a nice light menthol. So fantastic scent. Sample uh, that I got from Stash Soap Works Aqua and uh, Fuzzy Face Soaps Black Tea. There's still a little bit left in there. Then again, Brad, first Canadian, Maximo Gomez Cuba. The uh, Tampa Shave Company Barbershop, classic, great scent. Then the uh, Rock Rolls Apothecary, uh, Patchouli Mint little sample. The uh, Goldax Classic uh, Shaving Soap. And uh, just to show you guys, this is a hard puck. I guess I have a second one. <laughs> and this is uh, what it looks like originally. Comes in here and it's a very, very hard soap. Put that back in. Comes in a screw-in tin. Great stuff, good scent, classic scent, just manly, uh, hard to describe. Um, black Ship Grooming, don't ask me what that was for. Uh, the PG, um, yeah. <laughs> Corey from the, the Pittsburgh Wet Shaver gave me, gave me this sample. Still have to, have to try that out. Here are my um, three... Phoenix and Bow samples that I have, the Albion, the uh, Citra Royale, and the, uh, not for the life of it right now, sorry, I'll put it in underneath. Um, okay, Shave Sticks, La Toa, La Toya, La Toya, Toa, however you pronounce that, good one, this is usually my travel kit, some Ako. Uh, still have to try that one out. And there's a bunch of soaps in here which I haven't had a chance to try. Uh, this is the Palmolive Shave Stick. The Wilkinson Sword Shave Stick. The Tabak Shave Stick. In here is the Spike Shave Stick. Uh, let's keep going. The... Uh, Tempa Shave Company Mango Lime uh, by K Shaves Work. Fa 
fantastic uh, scent, just like the, the name says, mangoes and limes. Uh, Barrister Man La Vanille, uh, really dark soap. It's a, it's a nice mix of, of a, a, a soft lavender and some vanilla added in there, so it, it's a little sweeter. There we go. Maggard Razor's uh, London Barbershop, great scent. Really good uh, version of a, of a barbershop, by the way. Uh, a little on the citrusy side. Uh, Phoenix and Bow Spitfire. Then we have uh, Mont Savon, Authentique, uh, Shave Soap, the uh, Bola Rase. Um, yeah, nice fresh scent. Good, good standard soap uh, can be had fairly inexpensive in France. <clears throat> the uh, Wilkinson Sword, just a hard puck. Good soap, good standard soap. This one comes by the way of Canada, Brad Melling. <laughs> Phoenix Artisan Accoutrements CAD, uh, lovely, lovely scent. Uh, absolutely thrilled to have it. There's Phoenix Artisan Accoutrements The Beach. Uh, this was a collaboration uh, in the original version of the with the Italian Barber. Uh, smells like the beach, like a hot beach with the sand and everything, so uh, Douglas did well on that. Uncle John's Pipe Smoke, which I still have to sample. Right, uh, now we're going to get into some of my Sterlings. The black cherry and what I do here uh, these tins I uh, usually get uh, one or two samples put them in a tin put the label up top and uh, if I like it I buy a second sample and then I have two to three ounces of soap which is more than enough with the stash that I have in there so the black cherry the Piacenza lovely scent uh, The bay rum, this is my only bay rum, sterling bay rum. And it's, it's a little clovey for my liking. So it doesn't get pulled out all too often. Uh, the autumn glory, the, the, the fall scent, uh, which is basically, it smells like, uh, like leaves, like, like woods. A um, little damp, uh, really, really nice though. Baker Street. Which is also, uh, I think, somewhat of a barbershop-ish type scent. Tuscany. Uh, Sterling Noir. Love that scent. Dracar Noir. Uh, Sandpiper. Sterling Gentleman. Uh, let's keep going. The uh, Sharp Dressed Man, this is the only full size tub I have of Sterling's. The uh, Reef Point Soaps Dragon's Blood from Brad. That was just kind of parked on top of there. Arcadia, which is. Um, uh, it's getting late today, guys. Uh, Terre de Hermes. And uh, Hot Apple Cider. And I took a full refill puck of this and mashed it in there. Uh, fantastic stuff. Although the uh, the cinnamon oils in there do cause my face not to really react, but uh, it gives you a warm sensation. So I'm, I'm kind of, I don't know if it's the hot part of that apple cider or if it's just my, uh, my face reacting to it. These are just empty boxes, some of them that I still have around. Uh, this is some uh, soap, soap samples from a German artisan, which didn't quite work out. I just uh, hadn't ha had the, uh, the heart to throw them out yet. Here is Shaver Heaven uh, Barbershop. Nice scent. Mm. Um, we'll see if Shaver Heaven and when, when they come back again, but I'm glad I've, I've got this, thanks to Brad Melling. Like I said, just some, some empty boxes. <clears throat> Here's some Vanderhagen. Still, uh, that one's full. The rest is empty. 
some uh, HJM Rasierseife, uh, which is the, the budget brand of uh, Mühle. Can be had for like five bucks in Germany. It's a very, very hard soap, uh, aloe vera scented. My only Katie's Bubbles, 95 liquid labels, which is uh, their version of uh, Tommy Hilfiger's uh, Tommy from the 90s. Some Cella, uh, the original version, as you can see. And it's, uh, yeah, it's still soft. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, some, incidentally, some people call this cello. You know who you are. <laughs> All right, uh, let's continue up top. Uh, some sterling samples that I got from, from Andrew. Uh, one of them, uh, there's, there's one glacial in there, which I need to try. Gordon's dry gin. Cheers. Uh, hoopala. There we go. Yeah, this is just the last little remnant of my very, very first shave soap that I had back in 1999. I gave it a try back in 99 with uh, a brush and some shave soap. And this was a kilo block and I just kind of cut a piece off and this is the last remnant. Everything else got thrown out, but I'm just kind of keeping this for, uh, for keepsake. So, yeah, things didn't work out. Unfortunately, uh, YouTube wasn't around back in the day, so I couldn't watch anything <clears throat> on it, and uh, it just kind of, yeah, it just didn't work out. Let's put it this way. The second time around in 2015 worked out a heck of a lot better. And I need something to drink. So, a cup of coffee. By the way, my mustache cup. Uh, vintage, which I picked up for, uh, I think, buck seventy-five or something like that at the Goodwill store. Ah, uh, needed. And we're back. I'm terribly sorry about that, but the uh, the memory card was full. <laughs> so I hope you can see this. I tried to set it up the same way I did before. Probably a little off position. Uh, hope you can see this. All right, where were we? Coffee, right? Half a puck of Executive Man from Sterling. The other half I've already given away, and same with Sharp Dressed Man. Gave that away to a friend of mine. Uh, got some bath soap from Sterling Soap Company, The Sheep. And a sample of the Bay Rum. More samples. Uh, Taylor of all Bond Street Eaton College. Uh, this is Henri et Victoria. Uh, cognac and uh, Cuban cigar. Great scent, by the way. Good soap, too. Uh, Maggard's uh, Limes and Bergamot. The tobacco and leather, also from Maggard. And uh, Northern Moss, also Maggard. Right, so uh, Cremo Beard Balm. Some Izana Men uh, Beard. Uh, pomade, uh, yeah, it's it's basically like a beard balm. Uh, doesn't do much as far as hold goes. Just uh, greasy. Uh, not one of my best purchases. Small thing of uh, Nivea or Nivea. This is uh, Nivea uh, intensive care uh, for winter time. Great, great stuff. If you guys can get a hand on it. Uh, the holy black. Shaving soap, which I just uh, had on the live shave. Another Nivea Soft. Now, uh, right, ha, Stash Soap Works, Maxwell, fantastic scent. Uh, let's just get two of these razors out of the way. This is my very first razor that I ever had, uh, the Gillette Zenzoa. And this is the one that followed after it, the Zenzoa XL. Uh, another sample of Sterling's uh, Barbershop, which I still need a tin for. Uh, just a, a mug from Colonial Williamsburg for lathering. A uh, refill puck of uh, Goldtag's Rasierseife. This is the uh, Sport. The other one was the Classic. Uh, another one of London Barbershop. 
and this one is uh, in the corner because it's going to my son to Germany so if you see this Frank that one's yours Cremo uh, lathering shave cream well the lathering is debatable uh, okay scent but uh, the soap itself isn't really worth talking about Stash Soapworks Liam Cruz Stash Soapworks Enchanted Village fantastic Christmas scent uh, this smells like a baker shop with all the uh, like uh, Christmassy uh, cookie scents and all that next uh, Christmas scent uh, Stash Soapworks Candy Cane fantastic peppermint nice and mentholated like in the winter time you need menthol right anyway uh, this was from uh, Lock Butcher the Razor Rock uh, Plague Doctor a sample a nice healthy sample so thank you still need to try that the uh, Dr. John's uh, Flowers in the Dark great scent uh, also from uh, Lock Butcher so thank you uh, it's a fantastic scent uh, Tallow and Steel the 150 uh, Canadian uh, limited edition uh, let's get these out of the way here. Um, the 444 aftershave bomb from from Brad Melling. Let's put this aside. The uh, Wilkinson Sword shave cream. Still untouched. <laughs> the uh, palm olive sensitive with uh, aloe vera. Also still untouched. I still need to try that. And this is one that was one of Brad's favorite uh, soaps, uh, creams. Haslinger Schafmilch. Got two pucks of that. Ringelblume. I don't know what that is in 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 English. Uh, marigold or something like that. I, I don't know. I'm not sure. Sandalwood. Sandalholz. Rasierseife. Oop. Salbei, uh, sage, I believe. Uh, coconut. Aloe vera. And honig, aka honey. Used this in a, in a shape before. And then let's get into the razor rocks. Uh, got the tobacco. Really nice tobacco scent. Uh, the uh, Fresco Verde from Italian uh, Barber. That's uh, this is the um, the sensitive skin line, which is is really mellow on the scent. It's it's greenish, um, fresh green. That's what it translates to, and that's what it smells like. It's a uh, it's a uh, yeah fresh and green, but lightly scented. The uh, Tuscan Oud and the Aqua. Uh, ha, P160. Great scent. Uh, marzipan, almond. A little on the light side for my taste. Uh, I prefer the Cella. Uh, just, just to that, to let that be known. Uh, the uh, TFS uh, Il Capitano. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Luca de Donato, Luca, <laughs> an Italian wet shaver, got his own soap, uh, American Barber, Million Audio, the, uh, TFS 70th anniversary uh, and this one is I have to look the Sotola Mole whatever that means but wonderful scent and these are uh, basically most of the Razor Rock soaps are uh, TFS based and uh, lather you know they're, they're they all lather pretty pretty darn good let's put it this way very easy to lather very easy to get along with scent wise not the strongest but uh, easy to get around 
good good beginner soaps. Amici. And uh I mean this is like what two ninety nine or something like that. Fantastic. And Bergamot Neroli. Uh I used to have the matching Don Marco uh soap, but I gave that to my son. So he's got that. Now that takes care of the upper part and it's getting quite full here. Alright, so uh just a little uh, thinky uh for the for the tubes. That one is from Crabtree and Evelyn. Got uh, all my uh, lather mugs and, and, and stuff like that. Here is the uh, the orange chill still in there from Sterling. This is my other lather mug. Get that out of the way. Yeah, my uh, Prohibition style triple butter shaving soap, which I uh, still need to do a proper video review on. Uh, this is, I think, my first, yeah, this was the, the, the first uh, soap I got. This was the uh, Colonel Conk uh, Almond. Colonel Conk, uh, I think uh, those of you who have been around a while know it's uh, just a, a glycerin-based soap. Um, not the greatest in the world, but you can get it to work. A uh, little leather uh, bowl, a little stainless one. Uh, the creams, here we go. Prorazo uh, Blue. Let's take these out. Palm Olive, the classic. Nivea Original. Florina Comfort. Spike. Needs to be in every shave den, seriously. It's great stuff. The Crabtree and Evelyn West Indian Lime. Fantastic lime scent. Doesn't have the greatest post shave. Gotta see, but fantastic soap nonetheless. Alright, there's one more. This is a cheapo and this basically needs to be tossed. It's a Balea Men Sensitive uh, Rasiercreme. In case any of the German guys are watching uh, this by any chance. This has a really off-scented aloe vera in it. Uh, it just kind of something that doesn't doesn't agree with my nose. Um, it's not a bad soap at all. It lathers great, uh, shaves good. It's just the scent that is a little off-putting. All right, so uh, these are Fairhope Soap Company uh, samples. This is uh, these are bombs. The iced uh, bomb aftershave bomb Savannah. Key, uh, Key West, which is a lime, also iced. Excuse me. Oh, Baba. Now we're going. Uh, hold on, we'll keep this uh, just for a minute. Put that aside. This is Havana, iced bomb, uh, tobacco scented. And Jakarta, iced aftershave balm. Um, this is this is uh, like a like a spicy one, very nice. Kind of kind of along the line of Old Spice a little bit, uh, just a little bit. Then I have uh, samples of the soaps that they make. Uh, the Seattle, the matching one for my final aftershave balm. Uh, it's an Italian style shaving soap, so very soft, but uh, lathers great. Uh, really good soap, and the Havana. Don't need a whole lot to get plenty of lather. Then I have, and this is also a compliment of Brad, uh, Canoe. This is the, the spray, the Eau de Toilette. Put that over there. This is the Aftershave, Canoe. This is, I think, the Eau de Cologne. No, another Eau de Toilette. Uh, square bottle, also sprayer. Then I have uh, Limes and Bergamot the aftershave from from Maggard razors a uh, really nice uh, lime scented aftershave this is Elkos for men aftershave fresh this is just a generic very fresh scent um, going along the lines of the uh, Wilkinson sword soap if you you know basically almost a matching scent not quite but uh, going along that line very generic not a bad not, not bad stuff um, 
London Barber Shop. This is the Witch Hazel toner. Wonderful, but it's missing a little bit of that sting, so I'm uh, still interested in getting the proper aftershave. The Il Capitano aftershave. Um, yeah, unfortunately, the uh, the scents here are in Italian, so <laughs> uh, it's not going to do do any good. But uh, this is a kind of a sweet fruity note. Um, actually, really nice. Uh, really, really like it. If you if you want a little bit something fresher, something fruitier, um, it's not like obtrusive, but uh, very nice. The one fifty uh, aftershave matching to the soap. The uh, TFS, 70th, uh, Soto, uh, Soto, de, Soto La Mole, uh, very nice. Yeah, uh, citrus opener, definitely. Uh, it's got uh, like, uh, yeah, lemon, lemon up top, and some other, uh, verbena, Lizia Cubiva, Neroli, and uh, geranium. So, uh, very nice, fresh scent. Um, there's just some vintage bottles of uh, Nivea balsam, which I have back there. Uh, I, I don't need to take them out. I have the Gillette uh, Cool Wave aftershave, which yeah, I'm not too hugely partial of. Um, <laughs> burn relief gel. Uh, for sunburns with uh, lidocaine, I think is what, what, what it's uh, pronounced. Uh, it's a topical anesthetic and <laughs> I had this for sunburn and thank God I had it. The first time around I used my Gem G bar because I needed it. <laughs> uh, I, I, I got razor burn like you wouldn't believe. It was painful and I couldn't think about sleeping because my neck was on fire. I put this on, I was able to go to sleep, and the next day things were better. So just saying, in case you have a, a serious case where you've really did a number on your yourself and you can't take it anymore, that stuff works. Um, this is just some, some uh, experiments which I have, some vegetable glycerin, which I bought, some, some corn huskers lotion, which I've bought one time. In here, uh, there is, hold on, this needs to go. Let's just scrap. Uh, Vanderhagen, uh, I think this is the luxury line, and this is in there. The deluxe line doesn't get used a whole lot. And uh, just in case you were wondering, yes, this is a massive coffee mug. I uh, used to keep the creams in there until things exploded. But yeah, it's a German coffee mug, as you can see, it's quite sizable, and it says, mine's the biggest. <laughs> just putting that out there. Get to put these labels in there because I want to keep them just in case I need them, I mess up the labels. Guys, I think we're through. Um, that's about it. Yeah, this is just, a, just, just one more item I want to mention. Spike uh, bath soap, uh, if you can get your hands on it. I know Italian Barber has it. It's about four bucks a bar. It is one of the best soaps uh, that I can buy in a store in Germany the, that I've used to date as far as shower soap goes. Um, great skin feel. Uh, works out really well. All right, well, um, I'm going to get all this stuff back into the cabinet here. I hope you guys enjoyed taking a taking a look uh, behind the, the curtain there a little bit and uh, I definitely enjoyed showing you uh, yeah it's a little bit messy I know I'm terribly sorry I'm not super organized but uh, due to lack of space uh, you have to kind of get by <laughs> um, if you have any questions regarding scents soaps or aftershaves what they smell like, uh, you're very welcome to hit me up and I will try to give you the best answer I can. 
I'm not the best at describing scents, um, unfortunately, but uh, I will give it a good shot. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. Um, thank you very much for watching. And I guess I'll see you tomorrow or Wednesday for uh, a shave. And yeah, I'll leave it at that. I hope you guys have a good evening and uh, be safe. All right, I'll see you around. Thank you.